Hey, what's up guys? Today in this video, we are going to create a Shopify app. I'm going to show you how one of the template which Shopify provides now with their Shopify CLI, which is the Laravel template to create this app. So what we are going to do is I have this partners account where I have one store. Okay. And I don't have any apps as of now. So the idea is that I'll create an app. I will install that public app on this gadgets, AR tech gadgets, which is Amitav Roy tech gadgets, right? And once we install that app, we should be able to see what that app gives us out of the box. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So when it comes to creating an app using the Shopify CLI, the documentation I would say is very well done and you know, this is really the Bible which you should follow in terms of you know, what you should do and what not. Okay. But before you start building the application, there are definitely certain things which you need on your app, on your machine so that you can build the next best Shopify app. So what are the prerequisites? Let's go a little deeper and understand. So what they say is in terms of requirements, obviously you have to create a partner account. Partner account is something like, which I showed you, I can see my stores, I can see my apps, stuff like that. Okay. And then there is the development store, the store where we are going to install the app. Okay. So I have this app, which is artechgadgets.myshopify.com. Okay few products obviously and and I'm <clears throat> not doing much in that it's a demo app to be very honest obviously then we need node.js my node.js version let me see what's mine node-v14183 which does satisfy the minimum requirement I need npm yarn or pnpm so I have npm and yarn i know that git obviously i have and a browser well <laughs> that's fine so when we want to create an app the first thing is obviously to understand which template we are going to use shopify cli gives us the option to choose from either node php or ruby and the template for node which i saw was pure express so i was not too much interested in doing that so obviously the next choice my first love is going to be laravel so let's see how we can use the laravel template to create a basic app so apart from this all these requirements i have also installed shopify the cli okay which shopify so it's installed through homebrew and i would recommend that you install this as well because there are certain commands which you can run with this shopify cli tool in in you know, during your development which will help the overall process okay fair enough so let's get started um i will use yarn so yarn create shopify app let me get into my code folder tutorials and i'll just execute this code now it will ask me a name for the app niche negotiation app wow that's interesting let's just go with that it is now asking me which template i want to choose i'm going to go with php so now it will start doing its things in the meantime why don't we look at the app template so it says when you create an app you can specify the template that you want to use with the template flag obviously we didn't do that so it asked us which is fine php app template the way it is structured is we have this github vs code right and then there is some docker stuff then there's this web folder inside the web folder we have a typical laravel application with one extra thing called front end apart from the doc slash hosting as well so the front end is basically the front end template react that's the you know and that's another project which is being i would say pulled into the template 
So what you do is you use Laravel for all the communication, the data, uh, the GraphQLs and all those stuff. Okay, anything which is backend, and you use this React template for the admin screens, the front end part of it. Okay, and now let's see what has been covered so far. So it's still installing the dependencies for our web front end. That's not a problem. Okay, so we have our project ready. It says everything was done, app was initialized, liquid parsed, update, updated package JSON, dependencies were installed, right? The backend, the front end, completed cleanup, git repository initialized, fine. And so now if I go inside my folder called niche negotiation app, okay, it's here. Let's see what they are saying. So once this is done, I can go inside, I can do npm run dev. Fair enough. Creating an app in the connecting. Okay. Fair enough. Let's just do that. I'll go inside here. NPM or rather yarn dev. Something which should work for me. So let's see what is happening. Dependencies installed. It says looks like this is the first time you are running dev for this project. Configure your preferences by answering a few questions. App name is correct. So this app was created in my partner account, which is fine. Let me see what all things happened. Then the tunnel is running and you can now view, view your app. But obviously it didn't come through. Disable process timeout. Okay. This is a bit weird. A composer level problem was created. If I do composer install, interesting. And I thought that the composer packages would have been installed. Fair enough. So what I understand is that you know, this is required. I will do that. In the meantime, let's see if the app actually got created. Yes, it is. So this app got created. It says zero installs, which is correct. Earnings is zero. That's fine. API health is okay. Node web hook deliveries. Okay. So we are moving ahead there is something good happening let's again try to do yarn dev so when you do yarn dev the entire project will start the level application on a port and it additionally also starts ngrox which points your port 80 to this local application which is running on this particular port and i think this keeps on changing but what ngrox does is it's like a proxy any request coming to this particular url ngrox will divert it to your to your application which in my case is the application which is running on my local host 61162 this is very important because you know when you install the app on shopify or a lot of communications when they're happening, right? It will be the store which is sending data to your development environment. If you if you are not able to do that, then every time you make code changes, you deploy and then you test your app, which can be very, very difficult, right? And hence, what NGROX allows you to do is create this tunnel and now Shopify will send everything on this particular URL, which will in turn divert the traffic to your local development environment, right? So that's the biggest advantage. We use it within our team as well. So you know, because a lot of us are now working remotely, let's just say if I am creating APIs for the front end team, what I will do is I will host my application using ngrox and I will give them the current URL and they can happily access my API develop test stuff while i am doing my development okay so yes this is something which you should definitely explore all right now with this thing in place i have this url let me open this up in google chrome this is the first time we are going to install the app okay at this point it says that the database is not present i can see this error 
obviously this is going to happen because i haven't created the database let me see env it says storage db sqlite let me not use that path rather i mean people have different opinions what i would say is i'll use this path so database db underscore database env if it is not present it is going to use this particular file so i will do that okay, I'll, I'll stay with the convention which laravel follows in this particular case right now let me do php artisan okay i'll need to get inside the web folder sorry php artisan migrate okay this is done so now with the files in rather the tables in place right i can see shopify php app that is my app name and it says install niche negotiation app and that is going to happen in the ar tech gadgets which is correct i only have one store right so it automatically detected it there are some more information for example the contact informations and stuff like that is taking permissions for products and collections it can edit it which is fine let's just go ahead with it couldn't find current session id in the cookies which is okay let me now remove this and try to see what happens okay this doesn't work let me go to my shopify admin panel this is my app it generally gives that error i have seen that so not a problem if it can now redirect me to that page then we are basically doing fine right so now as you can see I'm inside the admin panel. So AR Tech Gadgets dot myshopify dot com admin slash app slash this is some ID. Okay, and this is the app which I have. How do I know that? Well, if we go inside the front end folder, go to the page index dot jsx. Nice work on building a Shopify app. Your app is ready to explore so yes this is what we are looking at now what this app additionally allows us to do is create 10 products or rather five products so i can see this is saying that i have already 10 products in my catalog which is kind of correct and if you pop it, I will click on populate five right it waits for some time there was an error creating product okay think this has something to do with the permissions let me still look at the logs all right might be some interim net connectivity issue but now this got created and i have no errors in my log file let's try to refresh this page and see so what does it say now it says 15 products let me see if that's correct one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yep around 15 so it did create those five additional products that's what it was supposed to do and yes at the end we definitely have you know one app which we just created although it is not doing too much it's helping us populate five random products inside our store but as you can see that means it is doing quite a few things for example if you look at what is happening so far when i click on the button right to populate five products if i go to web.php let's do full screen and get rid of the terminal these things are a bit irritating okay i have seen the api so this is one get url which is getting the product count so what does it do it request it gets the shop shopify session and then it is making a rest call client get product slash count okay 
and whatever is the decoded body value is coming up. So this is the reason this particular thing is coming which is fine and then in this URL which is API slash product slash create we are trying to create five products right so product creator call session and five I can do 10 as well I think and it will create those many products what does the call function do it is making a GraphQL query I am sure this is going to be a mutation where you know it takes the shop gets the access token the GraphQL client is created and then create product mutation is called variables I'm passing title a variant right with a random price to it things like that so yeah as you can see from this what I understand is a lot of boilerplate code is already written for you for example you are getting this mutation query through this particular package you are able to create a GraphQL client using the session and the access token which ideally would take a lot of time and that's the beauty of this boilerplate this boilerplate gives you a lot of things which are required at the back end and even the front end is quite nicely done because this page is already created and there is a sample page which we can use to you know, build more pages so you know page name and then let's see index page name right so we can do something like heading example and right it automatically reloaded itself so hot reloading and everything is in place and that's I would say pretty awesome because it is saving us so much time okay so yes that's what the basic scaffolding is for Shopify we have created an app this app is able to talk to our store it is able to create five random products inside our store right and we have some boilerplate code which we can use to add more functionalities we have a basic template screen so yeah this is a great starting point so yes guys i think this app right and whatever we are getting with this shopify cli template right this is really a very good starting point it gives us a lot of things it gives us a lot of examples on how to write the code the clients and everything which is definitely required and on not and on top of it it also gives you a nicely structured front end template which is even able to do hot reloading so what else do you want to kickstart your development so let me know what you think about this template and your views about developing an app in shopify if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel